Hello, my name is Joe and welcome to my web tutorial series where I'm going to be building out a React frontend and a Django REST framework API so that I can build apps in the future quickly uh, with all of my tools set up. I'm creating this web series because I think it will be useful for others who also want to create applications but are maybe missing some of the steps or worried or nervous about how to get started with building your own application. So I'm going to be doing things like, you know, installing your Python version all the way up to creating your application and then setting up a database and then populating that database and then making requests. And I'm going to be working through it as I work through it. So it's going to be quite a slow tutorial. Like I'm going to run into issues and you may want to skip ahead, but I want to just take the time to do this as I build so that others can learn as well. Uh, so without further ado, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, I'm starting with a, a folder here in Visual Studio Code. And yeah, now we just start. So the first thing I'm, want, I'm going to want to do is I want to get started with Django. Uh, this is the first tutorial I followed when I started developing web applications. Hopefully you can't hear my dog doing his phone, but if you can, whatever. Um, so writing your first Django app, uh, I followed this tutorial all the way to step four, the first time I ever built a web application and deployed it, and it was super helpful. Uh, to start, we need to get Django installed, um, which is a step before him. To get Django installed, we need Python installed. Uh, so we're gonna see, what Python version can I use actually? Um, I'm gonna use the highest Python version I can. I'm gonna try and obviously with new projects, you don't wanna be using legacy code right off the bat. So we're just going to start with the highest version we can. Um, what Python version do I have now? That works actually, you should be able to list the versions you have. Um, Python download page, let's just download it and It'll figure it out if we, uh, 3.11 was the highest, right? I believe it was. I don't think we're on four yet. I feel like I would know that. So press continue. Yeah, it looks good. Agree, install. Uh, what's my password? No, oh, that's not it. Okay, installing Python. Uh, this is my first time well, not my first time. I'm not that experienced with uh, using Mac either. So I'm going to run into issues where I just don't know the Mac commands to do things. Installer, all good. Woohoo! Sure. All right, so now we should be able to say Python version. All right, so we still can't. Uh, how do you say your, uh, your Python version? Let's, let's see. Uh, Mac or Python versions. Oh, I could try which. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's just dash a Python three point. 11. There we go. So I do have it. It is installed. It's not my currently running one in my terminal, which brings us to our first challenge, which is whenever you're doing a Python application, let's say you're at a job and you know, you're using Python 3.6 or whatever, and then you start this tutorial or another job or freelance and they say, we want to use Python 3.11. The way you have to set up your versions in a virtual environment, essentially, where you can install different versions of the same code for different projects. Uh, what I've used in the past, so one common example you might have heard of is Docker, like Docker allows you to install versions of software in a virtual environment and use it. Um, I've used virtual environment for Python for all my projects, so that's what I'm just going to use without thinking about it too hard. Uh, I already have it installed, I believe, but let's install it or like, let's try and install it anyway, so that you can 
use it as well. Pip install, wow. Hopefully you have pip installed, hopefully I have pip installed. Let's see. I don't have pip installed, that's perfect. Echo S install pip. Open the terminal up. Cool, 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 cool. I'm sure pip. Question I'm not sure. I'll believe him. Uh, with my cat, I command dash m and sure pip. Permission denied. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to run CETO with this. Uh, maybe you can. I'm just going to do it. Uh, I might Google this later, and if it is an issue, I will. Let you know. The camera's in the way. Yeah, I guess I should probably move that to the other side. I think it's doing the right thing. Oh, I can just drag it? Cool. Wow, Loom. Okay, Pip is installed. So now we're going to go back to what we were doing before, where we're installing the virtual environment. Boop, boop, boop. It's doing all the things. Tonight on that too. Uh, I'm just gonna see that. Uh, is that a warning? I can read it fast enough. I don't understand how you install pip and it's immediately like upgraded. I don't know why it does that. <clears throat> Okay, so now we have a virtual environment. Um, so virtual environment allows you to create virtual environments. So we're going to say virtual m uh, mac specify Python version because we want to create a virtual environment where the Python version is that 3.11 that we just installed. Okay, perfect. So I can't remember what I was doing. <clears throat> so let's just see where Python 3.11 is again. Okay, there it is. And then it's virtual environment dash dash Python to set the Python version and then the path to the virtual environment. I can't type, it's okay. And then I like to name mine them for a virtual environment. We draw that in list. There, we have a virtual environment folder. Bang, I would get, yeah, that's a folder. Um, and then, how do you add to it on the Mac? Create it, create it, uh, source. Okay, it's source as well. So run source, then, then activate. And there we are. We are now using our virtual environment. So we, if we like did a Python version here, you can see it's 3.11, where if I deactivate, I think I can just, yeah, and do Python version, that's the Python version installed like by default in my terminal or in my bash or however the hell it all works. Not ready to that stuff. Um, but we want to use that. So we have a virtual environment. Now we can start installing stuff and it will just be in that vem folder we just created. Um, what time is it? Okay, I do have to go, but that's like kind of our first 10 minutes. We have a virtual environment set up. Uh, in the next video, I am going to, I might actually match these videos together, but in the next video, I'm going to set up a Django app or start at least. So I'll catch you then.